Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I will tell you what is Bitcoin and its working from an investing point of view. We humans have moved from an uncivilized society to a society where we will soon see digital currency. And that digital currency is Bitcoin. To understand why Bitcoin or any other digital currency is the future of human civilization, you will first have to understand how did the financial system evolved. So let's go to the past and try to understand how it all started so that we can understand Bitcoin correctly. At the start of our civilization, around 6000 BC, barter system was first introduced by Mesopotamia tribe, where people used to trade by exchanging goods and that system was called as barter system. For example, if I needed to buy something from someone, in order for that, I had to give him some of my good. Let's say there is a farmer who grows wheat and then there is a shoemaker who makes shoe. So in order for that farmer to buy a shoe, he had to give him his wheat so that he can exchange wheat in order to get the shoe. And this is how people used to buy and sell things in around 6000 BC. But soon people realized that this isn't an efficient way to trade as this thing had a lot of drawbacks. Then people thought of replacing this system and they did it by precious metal. And that precious metal is gold. From this point, people started trading by gold. And very soon, gold was adopted as a form of currency by the entire human civilization. The reason why gold was fit as a form of currency is that it was rare and highly malleable. That is, it can be molded into bars and coins very easily. Now, this system continued for a few centuries, but then gold also had some drawbacks. Like if you need to buy something, you will have to carry all your gold to that point and this isn't easy. Plus gold had many other drawbacks. Then what happened is someone came up with a new system where that person told people that they can deposit their gold and in return, he will give them a bill or a receipt of the equivalent amount. And this whole system leads to the beginning of the system which we call as banking. Now what happened because of this system is that the people who are allotting bills or the receipts got more power and they were misusing it. They had the power of printing money like bills and receipts and this was the beginning of paper currency. And this is why we call our currency as a bill. Like we denote a $100 note by a $100 bill. And that is the reason for that. Now this system of backing a currency by gold continued till 1971 when US decided that they will no longer back their currency by gold and they started a new financial system. Governments decided that they will no longer back their currency by gold and they can print as much money as they want on the basis of the GDP and the debt. Now the fiat currencies which we use, it doesn't really have any value. It is just a piece of paper. It only has value because we people believe that it does. This current financial system which we are living in and which we are following has a lot of drawbacks and mainly it takes power from the people and give it to the government. Now to overcome the disadvantages of this financial system, a new digital currency was introduced and that was called as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital currency that works from peer to peer. So what does peer to peer mean? It means that person to person without any involvement of a central authority. So the question is what difference does it make and what problem does it actually solve? Let us try to understand this. Normally what happens in the day to day life is if you want to buy something, let's say you want to buy something from the shop. So you can either pay by cash, debit card or a credit card. So when you do this, bank gets involved with this and bank is the central authority that validates your transaction and maybe charge you with some kind of interest or anything like that. Now let's say I want to transfer money abroad and there is no Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. Normally what I would do is I would go to the Western Union office and then I will have to go through a long and hectic process where I will have to fill an application and then wait in a queue. Even when I am done with this hectic process, 
there will be a lot of limitations. Like I will be only allowed to set a limited amount and even after that they will charge a crazy amount of fee in that transaction. This whole process will cost me a huge amount of effort, time and money. And even this time the bank gets involved. But if I have Bitcoin and I wish to send money to any corner of the world, all I need is the Bitcoin address of that person. And within minutes, I will be allowed to send the amount which I want to send to that person. And that too with a very minimum fees. Now you may be wondering, when I already told you that there is no central authority involved in Bitcoin, whom does this fee go to? Well, in Bitcoin, there is no central authority. That is, there is no single central authority. The fees goes to random people. These random people validates your transaction and these people are called as miners. I will tell you about miners later in this video. But the most important question right now is who invented Bitcoin and why did he invent Bitcoin? Bitcoin was invented by a person or a group of people called as Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009. In 2008, the USA was hit by the most or the biggest financial crisis in the history of USA and it was caused due to subprime mortgage crisis. At this time, banks were giving away loans to the people who were not even able to pay it back. When these people were not able to repay the loan, the bank system failed and the central bank came to rescue and they did this by quantitative easing, that is printing of money out of thin air. What the US government did is they started printing money and then pumping it into the economy to support their economy and this brought more money into the system. Printing of money may have helped the USA at that time but it is not a good thing on a long term as it increases the depth and also the currency of the country gets weak causing inflation. Inflation is nothing but a phenomena in which the currency of the country loses its value that is the buying power of the currency. Now if a currency loses its value the normal people like us have to go through a lot of negative things like general increase in prices and fall in purchasing value of the currency. Even if a currency loses its value by 2 or 5 percent, it will have a huge impact on our savings. Like someone who has a retirement savings of let's say 1 million dollars, he will have to suffer a loss of 50 thousand dollar if the currency depletes by even 5 percent. And this thing may not be noticeable to the normal people because for them the 1 million in their saving account will still be 1 million dollars but it will lose its buying power by 5%. That is indirectly the purchasing power of the currency is affected. So due to all of this, the people have to suffer for something which they shouldn't have. And even after that, they will have to pay more taxes if the debt on the country increases. Now, this was just one of the problems. There are a lot of other problems which normal people like me and you are going through. And we people don't really have any power. Satoshi Nakamoto thought that the banks and the government are not reliable, they are not trustworthy. So he wanted to come up with something which would give power to the people. So Bitcoin was developed by Satoshi Nakamoto by keeping all of these things in mind. And this gives us back the power. He developed a digital currency in 2009 and named it Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital currency that works from peer to peer and is the answer to every problem that the current financial system has. Yes, Bitcoin do have a central authority. But in this case, they are just the random people who validate the transaction and are called as miners. To understand who are miners and what is mining, you will first have to understand how does the Bitcoin work. Understanding Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies can be very very complex. And I am trying my best to make it as simple as possible. So make sure that you pay attention to this. Okay, so Bitcoin works on a technology called as blockchain. Like this is the blocks and this is the chain. These blocks contain the information of the transaction and the chain represents a successfully solved or validated transaction by the miners. Let us understand this. Let's say I decided to send some amount of money. The miners will validate this transaction which we made by solving calculations with the help of computers. 
let's just say this is me and this is you and i sent one thousand dollar through bitcoin and you accepted it so for the transaction to be successful miners will have to validate the transaction so let's say this is a chain or hash there will be random computers who will try to validate this transaction and when it is hashed the blockchain will be added here and the computer or the person who mines it or solves the calculation will be rewarded in bitcoins and then the transaction will be validated and stored in this block this block will have all the details of the transaction made by users and the bitcoin blockchain has all the transaction made in the history of bitcoin so this is how bitcoin works and the process by which the miners earn money or the bitcoin or a transaction is done successfully is called as mining i really try to keep this as simple as possible and i hope you understood this if not then go back and watch it again because it is going to be very very important for us now let's move forward and know about some more things about Bitcoin. When Satoshi Nakamoto made Bitcoins, he developed such a protocol that only 21 million Bitcoins can be mined by the miners and with a limited supply to be released every few minutes. And this is the most interesting thing about Bitcoin. Unlike any other fiat currencies, its supply cannot be increased and therefore many more people are attracted towards Bitcoin. So this is what Bitcoin is and this is how it works. In the next video, I will tell you why should you invest in Bitcoin.